Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Sitani, and I'm your host. Joining me today is a very special guest. She comes from a Bud Light family in the Seattle area. <laughs> She's an ex-collegiate basketball player turned nationally touring comedian and she's open for great comics like Ari Shafir, Sarah Colonna, Nick Swartzen, and more and her new album Mostly Finger Guns pew, 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 for all you video watchers is available <laughs> now for pre-order and available on 1031 for the full flavors everybody please welcome Monica Nevy. Yeah, I'm back for myself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you right. so much for having me. I'm so excited. Uh, well, one, I'm excited to have this album come out. So even more excited to be doing podcasts. <laughs> oh man, you know what? It's a pleasure to have you. And I think I heard of you from a fellow comic, <laughs> and I started checking out your stuff. First off, I feel like you're crushing it on social media because all the videos, <laughs> I see the oh, snippets man. of them on Instagram, and then I'll see the full videos on youtube the most recent one was with you <laughs> a lot of the videos it seems like you have two characters and you do both of them yeah. and one was where you were showing the concept you were demonstrating the concept of pre-order oh yeah actually <laughs> with a pizza ordering a pizza and it was yeah that's funny smart. that's maybe maybe my most divisive video honestly some people were like oh i'm, I'm disappointed this was uh you know, I mean, trying to get people to know how to pre-order my album, but then other people were like, this is my favorite thing you've ever done. I'm like, oh gosh, that's so silly. But yeah, they are uh, commonly me talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's so good though. Whereas if it was just a normal average Joe talking to himself, it would probably not be good. But I don't know, you just got something to you where either by yourself or I think there was a story about a fight that broke out while you were telling oh, yeah. Yeah. stand up. Um, but it's, it's all been amazing content that you've had so far. You've really been crushing it on YouTube. Thank you. And Instagram. You know what? I appreciate it. Well, I mean, with given the situation, it was something that I decided I could focus on and still be creative kind of doing different stuff. So I appreciate that you like it because I have been focusing on, on the YouTube and, you know, social media aspect of this job. So <laughs> oh, that's, that, yes, yes, approved, approved. And you know what? I'm following you, subscribing, and listeners, if you guys aren't, the links are going to be in the show notes to follow and subscribe. Perfect. Subscribe. Yeah. So um, I was also, I wanted to talk a little bit about your special, available for pre order now, <laughs> a full release, 1031 Halloween. Woo! Um, I got the samplers, which yeah. uh, the, the three I know in your intro called you a Bud Light family member, <laughs> yeah. which was, I thought, hilarious. But I wanted to ask a little bit about that. This is your debut album. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to talk about, obviously, it was recorded pre-pandemic. Yeah. Oh, man. It's been so weird to listen back to it. Because, I mean, as you're going through it, I didn't even edit it myself, and I had to listen to it fully, you know, like 15 times. So I'm sure the editors mm -hmm. are plenty tired of hearing it. But it is so weird to hear... You know, I filmed it in Seattle in December. The club, mm -hmm. the Comedy Underground is a great, like very classic comedy club. It's in a basement, brick walls, low ceiling, you know, like it's exactly what you want in a comedy club. And now yeah. it gives me anxiety a little bit to listen to it and be like, oh, we were all so close and laughing out loud and no one was, you know, like there's 200 <laughs> people in this basement. Oh, God. Um, oh, my gosh. This is a little bit, but then you, you also do like, oh, listen to all these people having fun in the same place. Remember when we could do that? So if that's what you're looking for, it'll be, <laughs> it won't that's, give you anxiety then. That'll be nice. Oh, um, that's perfect. Plus it's an album. So it's just, you don't get to see it. You get to hear the uproarious laughter, but yeah. you can imagine that you're in a stadium. So yeah, I feel right. like it kind of <laughs> solves it. <laughs> It was a stadium, yeah. Um, <laughs> a grand theater. But, yeah. I mean, you've been doing stand-up for a, a while now, mm -hmm. and you ended up getting into it. You were an ex-collegiate basketball player, and you ended up getting injured. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I started doing stand-up my junior year in college because that was the year that I had stopped playing basketball. I was still with the team. Uh, my degree is in sports and exercise science, so I was like, I was with the team, I actually interned for them as well because it counted oh, for wow. my same major. I had a job, I was going to school, and then I was just like, let's throw something else on there. I really want to do stand-up. I've always really wanted to do stand-up. I think there was yeah. a bit of a void of always, you know, identifying as a basketball player and then not having that part anymore. I was like, mm -hmm. there's something that I need. And so, yeah, it was January of my junior year. 
in college that I did my first open mic and that, that'll be, it'll be 10 years this January. So it's oh been quite my a while gosh. now. <laughs> 10 years. That's amazing. <laughs> it is I, weird to think about how long that is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it definitely shows because looking at some of your comedy online and listening to the three tracks that I was I was um, gifted pre-order, um, it, it sounds like you're very polished. You are very witty. It's a kind of dry sense of humor. I hate labeling or or um, you know describing since I'm not really an official critic. But I laughed, I lolled, I guffawed even, and oh, so wow. I thought it was That's... was very good. <laughs> Well, you heard uh, it here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask how how did your on your comedy journey did you start out? I mean, were you always with a certain style, or did you kind of experiment with different styles and say, "Oh, you know what, this is mine." I will say that it, it's probably a pretty similar style in that the writing. I've always had this theory where there are two ways to start stand-up. I'm sure there are more, but either you understand writing jokes and you mm -hmm. don't have your stage presence quite isn't there yet, or other way around, maybe you already have a background in stage and you are really captivating as a presence, but the jokes aren't quite there. So it's making those two things go together that when you really become good. And so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. never did stage anything. I, you know, I was an athlete, so I was used to being in front of people, but you're so in a zone. It doesn't have anything to do with them. You know, like it's, it was different. And so I just written these jokes. I had no idea whether they were, you know, I knew I thought they were funny kind of thing. Right. I had no idea how it was going to go. And when I very first started, I, w I was standing in one spot. I didn't move. I just kind of said like, here is the thing I wrote. I'm going to tell you. And then you laugh or not. Like that was, there wasn't any, like now I, 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 I pace and I really enjoy the audience part of it not necessarily crowd work even though i do like that also but just the like I, I feel like we're having a good time together now you know before it was like i'm gonna give it to you it's yours i don't know i don't you know i'm not gonna get too physically invested and now it's i'm just more relaxed basically and it is still so fun and uh it's yeah i think just generally because some of the bits <laughs> this is always kind of embarrassing to admit but one of the bits which I still have merch for <laughs> is um, I did on my first open mic like it was a joke that I had written then that is on the album like it's you know it it lasted but it's so much different the way that I tell it now you know like it's uh -huh. uh, yeah it's just a different experience but I th so I think like the writing has always kind of been the same but the presence and the confidence and the you know the I want people to feel like we're hanging out at a you know at a house party when someone's like telling a story and everyone's listening but it's very casual and you feel like you're like that's what I want people to feel like at a show so it's definitely more uh comfortable I guess I'm just much more comfortable yeah. on stage but the writing's always been pretty similar <laughs> yeah yeah I also that put a weird image in my head when you were talking about basketball and you're not really paying attention to the crowd and I thought that'd be very <laughs> strange if you have to shoot a free throw but then also tell a joke so <laughs> that, would... <laughs> that would be really strange but you know it's you practice I guess <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like you've accomplished that feeling comfortable and I think I was watching a clip of you were talking about some stuff like oh Disney princesses and uh, you want to be like Disney princesses but for the wrong reasons because they like <laughs> drugs and stuff like that and it's stuff that I, I'm thinking about it. I'm like oh man that's so funny and I feel like it takes a certain confidence be able to be able to say something like that and I there feel like a, you yeah. <laughs> well that's good I feel like when I first started I was very much um well, it's a, I'm sure I wasn't confident at all, but it's, there's something that comes with, cause you're right. I am pretty dry. It's fairly low energy. I mean, it's not the lowest of the low, but it's, you know, I'm not doing high kicks or anything. And so you not really yet. have to be, <laughs> yeah, you really, you will see how this album goes. Uh, <laughs> you really have to be confident in the fact that the next thing you say is going to work because there's always going to be a little bit of a, I like tension and release. I like people going like, where is she going? And then the release is bigger mm -hmm. because people are kind of trying to figure it out. So you have to be confident in that tension part in the like, just trust me, we're going to get there. Don't worry. You know, you got to like be confident in that part of it, which I do mm -hmm. think the more I get comfortable on stage, the more confident I am in that part. I kind of like the waiting. I kind of like the, um, 
you know, let, let a, a laugh really linger in the way that it's like, let them think about it a couple of times. You know, I don't have to rush into the next thing. It, that comes, that comes with the, the, I guess the time of doing it probably too, but. <laughs> I, you know, I remember I was listening to your podcast too. And I think you were, when you guys were talking about you and Mike Coletta, your co-host talking about the album and you're like, I, I like innuendos. I like them to work for it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, we're a team. You got to do some work too, right? That's yeah, it. yeah, ex exactly, exactly. What do you think? You're just going to sit there and drink in a basement? Jesus. <laughs> That's what they're hoping for, probably. <laughs> they're like, please, God, please. <laughs> right. But as, speaking of, I know that you've been doing a podcast, Hug Life, which mm -hmm. is the the damn most adorable name <laughs> I've ever heard for a podcast. It makes me just like want to cozy up while I'm listening to it. Good. Oh, that's um, great. <laughs> and you know what? It actually, your voices and tones and themes are just as uh, embracing and snuggly. So I feel like it really is embracing the hug life. You guys put positive spins on things. Um, you just reached your 300th episode. By yeah, the way. it's been like six years. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, we had the idea so long ago. I mean, I just basically which i think now is more relevant than ever i get stressed out watching the news and hearing all the bad stuff and so mike has this very his energy contrasts mine like perfectly because he's very high energy and louder than i am but his natural state of mind is actually kind of negative and i'm the opposite <laughs> where i'm like pretty low energy but i'm like naturally yeah. optimistic so the contrast works really well and um just the idea of like having, it's just silly, honestly. It's nothing, um, we just wanna be positive. We talk about charities, you know, we just talk about good news stories and stuff. Um, and of course it's dirty and silly and, um, yeah. you know, if we, we, nobody can stay completely away from some of the stressful things, but that's what we do. We take whatever the stressful thing is that's going on and try to find the positives in it, which is always kind of a challenge, so. Um, but yeah, it's been quite a while now. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, definitely. But it, it's really good. I, the yeah. last episode that I listened to, you guys were talking about if you could have a, a certain song, the one of the most annoying songs <laughs> oh, yeah. stuck in your car, you know, how would you deal with it? And Mike was yeah. pretty good. I mean, he, you had... I mean, oh man, talk <laughs> about like, you know, comfortability over time. So that game we call it top five turnaround. And I find like an internet list of the worst of something. So that was like the most annoying songs of all time. And uh -huh. then I give him this scenario of like, okay, you know, you, this is the only song that plays in your car forever and you can't change it. And you also can't turn it, you can turn it down, but you can't turn it off, you know? So why is this song good? And he, now he's just so good at being it's the first thing that comes to his mind and it's always very ridiculous, but that's the whole, you know, so he's really good at just, he's never, I don't think he's ever not answered one, you know, he's never been like, Oh, that's too hard pass. You know, like he's, he always finds something. So that's, that's pretty incredible not to, well, let's roll in the deep for just a quick sec. Then we can go up for air. But right. I, I do remember reading something about, there was this exercise to not complain for 30 days and you oh, wore wow. this rubber band or this band on your wrist. And if you complained, you had to switch it to the other wrist before the Ooh. 30 days. And so what that did was it actually changed people's thinking of when they received bad news, they thought about it in a different way. And oh. instead of instantly trying to complain about something, they would try and either think of the positive or whatever. So beyond the funnies that you guys deliver, I feel like the nice topping on top of this comedy podcast pizza is the the changing the way that people are thinking and giving people inspiration to be like, yeah, uh, maybe there's some comedy in in <laughs> these bad things, or maybe there's a way to turn it around. So that's so funny. Yeah, I mean that's definitely where like the brainchild came from. I try, like I love all that stuff. I'm not, I just don't come across as kind of like the yoga hippie person but I very much am in my heart <laughs> and so the <laughs> positive thinking and all that like my dad is such I mean he'll hate that I describe him as this but he's kind of a stoner and he uh, always said uh he'd always say you can't don't because your mind doesn't process negatives so when you say you know like don't spend all your money then all you're thinking of is spending money so mm -hmm. reframing things into a positive way has always been something I've enjoyed doing and also mm -hmm. something that 
obviously my father had taught me but so then putting it into podcast form somehow was like let's see how this goes you know <laughs> but God. it's been fun just because it is such real things that we still have to talk about and we're like how do we make this good <laughs> right right yeah. no it, it really is beautiful it just reminds me of like a netflix show about chefs or something like this is my grandma's <laughs> recipe and then i just put a little chocolate in there and then i made this my own thing so i yeah. feel like you're oh, really good. making That's it nice. your own and it's uh <laughs> it's very tasty it's scrumptious That's what it is. So, all right before we get into the self-help i think i had one more crap question Question. I had one more question. I didn't it know we is, were doing questions. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, this is the question segment. Question and rant, <laughs> answers. But, <laughs> speaking of dishes that chefs make, <laughs> uh, that sounds pretty awful. I also wanted to ask about your mini docu-series, oh, yeah. 80 okay. for 80, because mm -hmm. I watched the first episode and it was awesome. I didn't know what I was going to expect because I, I was just going through Monica Nevy material and then I see this and uh, I saw it in your bio and, and so I took, I, I looked at an episode and then it comes at like it, you and you're like, we're going to interview people over 80 or something way more dramatic and well-worded. But th then you cross your arms and then it goes into like what looks like an ESPN documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a guy, uh, Robert, and he's talking about being a florist. And then <laughs> the the way that it's filmed, it is so well executed. And the oh. people over 80 are just highly entertaining as is, but your questions really <laughs> made, it brought the humor out of him. So I thought it was such a creative and such a brilliant idea. But oh, how did that... You. How did that start? What gave you the idea to do that? You know, it's funny. Every time I answer this question, I feel like it really brings it down. But um, my grandfather had passed away. And so oh. I had like, I just had all these questions for him. He was a very funny person. He also would say whatever, you know, even before yeah. he was that old, he just didn't give a shit. Yeah. So I just felt like I had all these questions for him that I would have wanted to ask about how he felt about his life, uh, the people in it, you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before it got to the point that I couldn't do that anymore. And so that was kind of literally what prompted it. It was, I want to hear these stories now. I like everything through a comedic lens. Um, I love sports. So it kind of, I mean, 80 for 80 is literally from 30 for 30. Like that was, it's supposed to be in the theme of a sports documentary. So I'm glad that you got that from the beginning. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, yeah, that was really... I just, and we wanted to run with kind of, if they say something inappropriate, that's perfect. You know, like, let's go with it. I think I described it as like your parents are still trying to sugarcoat things for you, right? They're, right. they right. don't want you to be too intimidated by life. These people don't care. Like they're, they've gone through it. Every jaded, cynical part of them can speak now. You know, it's like if you were, it was your first day at a job and the kid who's a supervisor is like you know this is what we do this is the, follow these rules blah 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 you want to talk to that guy who's already put in his two weeks because he's going to tell you you know where all the good stuff is you could steal how where the cameras don't point you know those types of things yeah. Yeah. That, and that's what we wanted we wanted them to kind of give us the insight that nobody really you know and i don't think anybody's not anybody, but most people aren't listening to them anymore too. So they were also excited to kind of be there. They felt very special. We did a premiere. I had gotten a grant to make it through um, an arts organization in Seattle called For Culture. And part mm -hmm. of the, having the grant was to do a, an event. And so we did this premiere event and they just, they felt like rock stars. And it was one of the cooler parts of it was that Oh. They um, got to be there. Robert brought champagne. Um, oh, <laughs> he, hell yes. yeah, drink. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then you know, and so also there's a part of it that you know their families have that. Forever. Robert has actually since passed away, so they oh, have no. that. You know, they have that yeah. forever. Um, yeah. Which was it was a, uh, it was so fun too. Like it, and then of course after you make something, you're like, oh, I can do this better. I can do this, and so we've always wanted to make more. And then every time I finish a project or something, I kind of go back to that one and go, okay, how do we do more? And right now just literally isn't possible because of 
of all demographics to want to work with over 80 isn't um, yeah. one you can really get to right now. So yeah. uh, we would love to do more in the future. And by far, one of the things I'm most proud of, one of the most rewarding projects I've had, and I got so lucky. I had a friend who is just talented beyond what he's, you know, what he was doing at the time, at least. Um, that edited everything for me. His name is Ruben Rodriguez and he now works for National Geographic. Um, and then the guy who directed it also was someone I'd worked with before. And he was like, hey, I saw some of your Instagram videos. I was wondering if you wanna make some videos together sometime. And he's like a director. And I was like, actually, I have this like kind of big project that I would love. So he hopped on. I mean, I got these guys for way less money than I you know than they're worth and they just did such a perfect job of me going this is what I'm thinking and then it and it being even better than I was thinking you know so they really make it look good and the editing is great and it's because of those guys Richard Kilpatrick is the director and Ruben Rodriguez was the editor so I got very lucky with those guys holy shit well flag nab it monica you are <laughs> I, I i think you are like the comedy chef because it's oh. beautiful to hear the ingredients of your passion for basketball your grandpa and helping out people that it feels like they've gotten their back turned on by society and bringing a light to them and you know squeezing them for the wisdom nectar that they have that's a violent yeah. metaphor but <laughs> you, you know being able to it's very <laughs> <visual. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But uh, but I, it was just such a, a touching episode that I saw. I only saw one, but I'm going to go through and just blaze through. Yeah, the I mean, they're, they're not too long. It's pretty easy to get through them. So but they're, um, yeah, they all have different stories, too, so, which is nice. So that's beautiful. Oh, God. Well, all right. On top of that, we're going to go into <laughs> the self help portion of the podcast. Monica, I was going to say, do you, we'll have room at the end for plugging, but do you want to plug anything? And what have you got going on? Album? Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> where um, can people find you? Well, I can't think of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes, very excited for the stand-up comedy album, Mostly Finger Guns, will be out. It's on pre-order now. That's my suggestion. Just pre-order it, and then you won't have to think about it. It'll just pop up. Um, Beautiful. It's October 30th is when it comes out. But if you want to wait till Halloween, that's fine as well. Um, <laughs> and then, so we're going to do, normally when an album comes out, you do like an album release show, you know, and you right. have some friends on and then you do new stuff and then everyone can buy an album kind of thing. It's not an option here. I'm in Washington state and we can't do any live entertainment indoor or outdoor until phase four. So we have opted to do a live stream stand-up show over uh, my YouTube channel on nice, the 30th nice. at 7 p.m. Pacific to kind of celebrate and you know I'll do some stand-up I'll have some friends and um, you know they'll do sets so that'll be um, hopefully somewhat helpful um, and then those are the things like we talked about that I had been focusing on was the YouTube and the Instagram and stuff. So everything's always just my name, Monica Nevy, except I just got a TikTok, which someone took my name. <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah. So I'm Monica Nevy comedy on TikTok. But okay. Um, okay. yeah. And then again, maybe this is a bit too much, but I also no, no, do, never. <laughs> I do a meditation like I do guided meditations they're kind of a joke, but honestly, I think they're pretty relaxing. <laughs> um, uh, that I did on YouTube for a long time. I would do one a month. And then I decided to do a 10 track album of guided meditations with a composer from LA. His name is Jeremy Shabo, who did original music for all of it. And that comes out about a month after. So it'll be November, like the Monday after Thanksgiving. We'll probably be in, and that one's called Chill. And that is, yeah, 10 tracks of guided meditation, all for a different, like, meditation for work stress meditation for family gathering you know like they mm -hmm. all have a different thing but yeah it's um that one I honestly enjoy listening to more because <laughs> it's like um you know after you listen to your stand-up for long enough you're like okay I've heard this I do it all the time I've heard it it sounds fine let's just get to the next thing but with these because he's he, he's really talented and he's making this music that is so great and it's going with just these silly things that I'm saying Right. It's basically 
the embodiment of what my like positive thinking is because it's still like I swear and I still like it's silly but it also is like positive and the that's sum of it like I so feel pretty cool. good after I listen to it that's so, so, so is, is it like you know the nice music and then you're like all right so close your goddamn eyes yeah pretty much. take a deep fucking breath okay I yeah. like I, well, I can get on so board with this yeah there's one track the first track on the album it's just meditation for relaxation there's a music video that we made on my youtube of that if you want a good example we'll have another youtube video like music video version come out right before the album is available but okay. um it's it's so funny too because i mean i again i'm getting very lucky working with people who are very talented and of course giving me like discounts basically <laughs> but um <laughs> everything I'd say like I have one that's I call it like game time but like meditation to get you like hyped up you know and uh I was like can okay something kind of like the bulls 96 like warm up you know like uh coming out of the tunnel music and he was like oh yeah I got it and then he gives it back to me and I'm like oh my gosh this is perfect you know like so it's it is very good some of it is that very classic like you know bells and stuff type of meditation music but other there's some different I don't know if you would say different genres, but it's like a relaxing version of a lot of different genres too. So I'm always very astonished by the the music aspect of it because it's very yeah. good. So. That, that's also, that's awesome. And all those links are going to be in the show notes for all of you guys curious. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> even those of you that aren't curious, just fucking click. What are you doing? Yeah, click on it anyway. No. And uh, no, I mean, I know you're saying that a lot of these people you're lucky to work with, but I think they're lucky to work with you too, because I feel oh. like everything that you've said is just, and I'm not just trying to tickle your elbow with a feather. <laughs> are you better you're saying is. for something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I think that your your comedy is awesome and, and being able to, um, you know, create these different formats, these different creative formats that I feel like are really unique are stupendous. So Thank very you. sensational job. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to get into the self-help. <laughs> Perfect. But I, am, I, am I too white here? I'm seeing your yes. skin tone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I look like a vampire right now. You look is healthy. It- you just look like you're like naturally lit, like the windows is the window open i don't know like a, I'm, I'm a natural specter i think i just got a it's different like light glow yeah i Wait. don't know oh there, yeah that changed it sunburn perfect <laughs> okay great all right i'll let that go i just looked at myself for a second i was like ah so um anyway we're gonna go to the self-help we're gonna start off balancing ourselves with an inspirational quote. So I've got an inspirational quote that I want to be able to read and we can decipher it, talk about it. But before we get into that, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes to get them through their dark days. Monica, I feel like you've got a good one. It's tough. I have so many, I feel like, you know, it's a uh... Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, th- and now it's like, oh man, I just feel- Well, you only get one, so- Okay. Make it count. I think it's perfect for right now. And I've always really liked this one, but it is, if you're going through hell, keep going. That's one of my favorite ones. Just, you know, if you need oh. it, then there's nice. every, oh, by the way, you're going to be there at some point. So that's why I always like, <laughs> you'll get through it though. You know, that's, yeah, awesome. that's one of my favorites. If you're going through hell, keep going. Who was, <laughs> was that Dr. Seuss? I don't even remember. Um, I think I think I read it in Talk Green Eggs and Ham. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will I not have it in hell. Yeah. <laughs> they ripped awesome. those pages out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The editor was like, "We can't have this. Nope. It's too dark." It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you. That was a nice inspirational quote. Love it. I have an inspirational quote too. It's not by a person or Dr. Seuss or anyone you may recognize. It's actually by a robot, and its name is Inspirobot. And what its sole purpose to do is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and then just slap them together for a a scrumptious inspirational quote. That's amazing. I'm going to read this one and then we'll see if it makes any sense to us. So this first, (laughs) this quote by Inspirobot, it says, politeness will clear the way for global decay. Politeness will clear the way for global decay. I, I I feel like that's not working. Um, I feel like that's like a fortune that you'd be like you'd open it up and you'd be like ah 
can we trade? Like this is <laughs> this one's confusing. Um, yeah, I know it doesn't even oh, sound good with cool. like the in bed appended at it. So I think I mean is are they trying to say like if you don't what's that? Oh, there's a Marilyn Monroe quote, right? It, isn't it something like good girls never whatever well-behaved women never make history or something like that it's something like that right i right, feel right, like you're right. trying to get there of it's just being like if you're too polite you're not gonna get anything done like that is that <laughs> oh i thought it was the opposite i thought he was gonna say oh. <laughs> you're gonna get rid of global decay maybe climate be... change we're talking about here okay. if you're polite so if okay you're like... i thought we were like <laughs> got it okay I see what you're saying. <laughs> that's a more positive way to think i like that I, I, I read it. Yeah, I was thinking like, if you are polite, then it's just going to lead us into global. Then you're decay. done. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Climate change will be done. The earth will be yeah. over if you're polite. So be a, I feel like that's what, that's what the truth is. Unless, because I don't know if it, if I approached a person that just littered right in front of me, huh, I guess if I was like, sir, please, could you pick up your trash? Then they would be more responsive than if I was like, yo, douche could you pick up your trash <laughs> yeah yo pick up your trash right now i don't know the accent i feel I makes mean, it I more yeah. douche. so i'm so sorry to all of our new jersey audience that's uh <laughs> i apologize but maybe that is so if you polite about it then maybe people will be more receptive because you're being respectful that makes sense. i do i always err on the side of politeness kindness it seems to work so yeah it, it does but i mean well, yeah i don't know it's a tough anyway no I, okay it could be it's a nice quote i like it <laughs> that's a very polite way of saying it because it's a shitty quote you don't have to you don't, have you to don't candy understand coat it. it right away you're like is this a good i don't know <laughs> it sinks in yeah it, it's like your comedy a little bit it it <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's not that good compared. at first. No, it was just saying, no, 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 like, no, no. It's not a good one. No, no. It? Like you, it, you have to, it, you have to work for it. That's what you do. Yeah, I'd like to think I get a laugh here, and then hopefully later they think about it again. I, yeah. I do have a bit that's on the album, and I've posted videos of it about a automatic sink, like um, washing your hands in an automatic sink, and yeah. how often I get messages or even texts from friends or whatever that are like, the sink didn't turn on, and I can't stop thinking about your joke like that. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> I want you to think about it again later. <laughs> that's that's awesome. It's haunting. My comedy's haunting. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's fitting that it's coming out on Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. There you go. <laughs> Ghost comedy. I love yeah. it. All right. All right. Well, we're going to get into the, now that we're inspired, we're going to get yes. into the first question. Super inspired now. <laughs> yes. Um, if you would please follow me, Monica, I'm trying to be polite. Heed Inspirebot's advice. Um, this first question is from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Heather. Thank you, Heather. It says, my dog fell asleep on my chest and I have to get up. It's 3 a.m. where I'm at and I have to go to bed, yet I can't move without disturbing the sweet role using me as a bed. How do I get up without disturbing her? <laughs> I said oh disturbing. It like that. <laughs> you just ran She's, with it. I was trying to be polite and not saying. She, so I yeah, I appreciate that. But now it's global decay time. But <laughs> she she spelled disturbing she with spelled no like R. That? Oh, both times, both times. Disturbing. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this person is like five years old and they just don't know what to do with them. I mean, this is well, if they're five, three a.m. is way too late for this to be happening. But. Um, so still has access to the phone though obviously because if this is you're not able to move but able to ask us this question yes that's, that's true it could be maybe it's on mommy and daddy's ipad maybe and you're not know. supposed to have it so that's yes. my first if you are too young to be doing this put the tablet away it's dangerous for you <laughs> even if you're old enough put the tablet that's away true. If, if it's 3 a.m i feel like you would have had to be stationary for a very long time for a dog to jump up on you and just lay there and fall asleep and to be it sounds like they're in like the second cycle of rem so <laughs> i feel like you have been playing on your ipad way too much so right. i think you need to quit that habit i know this is a one-time circumstance question that's turning into like a habitual type of advice <laughs> right, we're really analyzing your life Heather, <laughs> yeah. but yes yeah, telling this person what a piece of garbage they have yeah they are, it's but. like go to bed fix your relationship with your father you know those types of things obviously <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
resolve those daddy issues and then you could get Sparky <laughs> off your chest. Literally. I mean, for some reason, my first thought, and this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, please, that's on brand. I was embarrassed to share this. But I thought of like a limbo situation where you would just like keep the dog on your chest and walk to, and walk to bed like that. But that doesn't... I don't know her limberness or any, you know. Do you do you want to hear something <laughs> embarrassing? Is I thought the same exact thing. Are you serious? What, when I when I got this question, when I saw this question, I was like, well, obviously, limbo would be yeah, just uh, keeps, suitable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, try it. Why not? Let's throw that one at him. I feel like yeah, that's pretty good advice. Yeah, if it doesn't go well, then you just hold him in your arms. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I just, it couldn't be a huge dog, right? If they're all the way on their chest, I mean, maybe it could just be their head or something, which would make it easier. Anyway. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's a Rottweiler just slammed on their chest and they literally need help. They cannot get up. (laughs) Use your phone for other things. Um, It's very disturbing. But I I think, (laughs) yeah, I think limbo is one pretty decent one. Change your entire life (laughs) is another good one. I feel like we kind of nailed that one so we can yeah. move on unless you've got any You're others. welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hashtag you welcome. Okay. We've got this one. This question sent by Diego. It says, giving and receiving birthday gifts. So Ooh, every okay. year for all of my... Re- oh, I'm sorry. I ran right over you. No, I, I was just excited for it. I didn't, <laughs> okay. I didn't have anything important to say at all. <laughs> oh, okay. Whew. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so every year for all of my really good friends, I will make them something that is very personal to them. And I know that they would really like, I love making and giving them gifts a, a lot for the sake of giving. But in the past five years, they haven't given me a gift back in return, which makes me really sad. I don't think any less of them, of course, and I'll still give them gifts, but is it really fair of me to feel this way? And if it is wrong, how do I fix myself? This is a, well, a very loaded question, Diego, but the, yeah. the one part, so if I remember correctly, did you say he was making them something personal or are they like, is he just buying them something that they would mm-hmm. like? No, he's making them okay. something. This is my one concern. <laughs> the quality of what's happening may be in question. <laughs> Like, I don't know if all of your friends are like, oh, here's Diego with his fucked up scarves again or whatever, you know. Like, <laughs> Can't even spell right. It's like disturbing with no R. <laughs> no, oh I mean, God. I love that. And I that's funny because I do relate personally to this. I went through a period of time when I was on the road for a long time and I would send people postcards or write them letters and like draw a picture and I'm not very good at drawing at all and and then in return they would like just send me a text and be like got your picture you know like it wasn't sometimes they'd be like oh that's so funny but never once has anyone written me a letter back um and I understand that that time I was it you know you couldn't find my Ford Focus but now I have an address you know no one sent me a letter since then oh, so oh I understand God. the frustration um but I do I always found it fun for me. So I think you should keep doing it, but just recognize that it, the giving part is also for you. It's, it may be more for you, it seems, uh, than, (laughs) than, than being like, you know, expecting some sort of reciprocation. It might not be there. Just enjoy the giving part. That's my advice. That's beautiful advice because I feel like I I feel like that's it because that's his passion. He likes giving gifts. He that's his thing. His friends like Brad and Chad might enjoy Xbox. So like that's their thing. So they don't like to make scarves for their friend Diego. (laughs) So, (laughs) So I feel like if that's what gives you joy, then keep doing it. But you can't expect reciprocity in anything in life that gets right. emotional so it brings me up to 12 year old right. but yeah i feel like you can't expect you're like oh i got you this can i have it back because that's never gonna right. happen or like i'm doing this thing so i can get this other you know then it's not really about giving if you're expecting them to to something in return you know so you got to just do it for i think inspirobot would probably agree with us and have some good quote about 
the beauty of giving is just giving whatever you know yeah exactly um, <laughs> if you give and expect to return that is global decay waiting yep. at your doorstep <laughs> so be polite about it um, <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right perfect we're gonna move on to the last however diego if you at some point want to make me a gift i will write you a letter back how about that there you go i will also accept your gift and i can make <laughs> um I can make songs, not oh. very good ones, but yeah. I, was a, I think that's uh, the best. When people say, you know, like homemade or very personal, it, I think it is another word for not that good. So <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> that is really good. It's homemade. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is going in the trash then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like if I was, if you were to get any homemade thing from a friend, what would you prefer? And I'm, I have an answer already. So, I'll... I mean, I'm assuming we're excluding food from this because that is the one time I think homemade should, would be better. Probably, well, maybe. I guess it depends. The, but I was gonna say I was gonna include food because I was okay. gonna say I would. Usually, when people home make stuff, maybe I just, I just have shitty cook friends because they always give me homemade stuff. Love you guys, by the way. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. But God damn it, Brad! If I get one more of those fucking casseroles again with broccoli, bleh, we're done. Our friendship's you know what? over. I have gotten, and maybe it's because I'm from the Pacific Northwest, but I have gotten uh -huh. an odd amount of homebrew that I'm like, I don't. <laughs> And it's always in bottles that used to be another beer, you know, like it's in a, oh, it's, yeah. it like got the label peeled off and then they it's recapped it. Got a little it. backwash of a. Yeah, of a... but it's also like, <laughs> it's just not that good. I think if people went through a phase here of being like, we could have like a nano brewery, which is when you just have a brewery in your garage. And, uh, and, and so I would try them. Why not? Let's do it. But my cousin, I love him, but he made like a banana stout that was not dark really at all so it just tasted, it just tasted like someone put a banana in a bud light kind of thing which i'm not opposed to but still it was just not right. what i thought it was gonna be very refreshing uh, yes so yes yeah, because and and the original thing was like oh we took this class me and my dad to make you know beer at home so we're gonna let you have some and i'm like oh that's a good idea and i mean he was well aware he was like hey i just started please don't judge me but <laughs> Yeah, it's not okay. I did. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I am, I am guilty of this because I, when I lived in Jersey, I started be to become a Brooklynite, and I grew mm. my hair, my beard, very long. I did this weird haircut where I shaved on the sides, kept it a little longer here, and then flowed it all the way to the uh, side. I've seen that. And, yeah. Yeah, and then I started home brewing kombucha i think i lost your video oh you're back okay there yeah sorry my the battery was it should oh, be sorry fine. anyways no, it's okay oh, <laughs> your and that, yeah, you're like i got really bored from the kombucha story <laughs> from the start no but i started to homebrew it and then i would give scobies to folks that were oh. yeah was it good so. though see that's the thing Oh, yeah. They were raised in a good home. They were great. Nice. Scobies. <laughs> They're free range. <laughs> free, free range. Yeah. No antibiotics. <laughs> so these scobies. It was a little weird, though, because I would go take the train to Manhattan. And so I'd have like a jar of oh, scobies, right. yeah. and, like the kombucha <laughs> brine or whatever it's called, the kombucha juice. And so people would be like, what the f are those like shrunken heads? Or yeah, I'm like, right. don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Pick up yeah. your trash, please. That's, that's fine. <laughs> So, so anyway, that was a, probably a bad gift that I was giving that people probably just threw away. <laughs> so, but it was fun for me. And to yeah. your point, Monica, if it's fun for you, keep doing it. And yes. if it's not, if it stops being fun, then get new friends and give to those people. Because maybe yeah, there you go. Somebody's gonna like it, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have very good friends. But they don't give you any gifts. You need like that's true. A gift Christmas, Hanukkah, birthday, New Year's, yeah. Carnival. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're on to our last question. This last question is from Reddit. It's from our fan, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Blake. Says, right. Daddy Long Legs, Virgin Panic Attack, urgent. Hi, all. First time poster here. I'm freaking the fuck out because of a Daddy Long Legs on my wall. Any ideas on how to lure it out of my room? I somehow. 
Sorry, I'm getting a little excited here. <laughs> <laughs> Let You're me calm down. <laughs> yeah. Said panic attack. I got to do it. <laughs> <sighs> I somehow got up the courage to try and trap it, but then it flew into my fucking face and now I'm out. I'm not going to try and kill slash trap slash interact with it anymore. I cannot deal with it sitting on my wall. Roommates will not help me kill it because they think I'm being ridiculous and it's in my room so should i kill it however if i lure it out into common space i won't have to deal with it anymore right so any idea how to make it crawl in that creepy ass way it does out my door sorry on the verge of tears i know this is irrational but phobias or fight or flight mode be like that and that's it that's all how do you, i mean how do you feel about spiders maybe that's why you got so into the, <laughs> the oh, reading I, <laughs> you're like I actually, i'm channeling I, spiders uh, yeah yeah i mean daddy long legs the they things that creepy. i'm afraid of yeah, i don't i don't mind them i think they're fine actually ever since i watched honey we shrunk ourselves with rick moranis where they got really small and then the daddy long legs was came nice. to the rescue yeah nice so, yes well and we've always been told that they eat mosquitoes or something i don't remember it was like that was the ones we weren't supposed to kill because <laughs> I forget about this. So again, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. There are a lot of spiders here. So they don't really bother me. Like most then they're pretty small, but Right. And I usually just kill them, unfortunately. But we were <laughs> Okay. Wow. Straight we to the in, point. Die. Um first or second grade. I don't remember. Probably second grade. And we had white tile in the hallways of my elementary school. And we had just <laughs> We had just done like a section on like not killing insects because, you know, the whole ecosystem works together. And if we kill all them, then it kind of throws things out of balance. And obviously in my head, it hadn't all the way sunk in to the point where I could think before I did. That. <laughs> so we're walking like from that class to the other classroom and there's this big spider and everyone's like, whoa, look at it. And I hear the teacher go, yep, we just talked about this. Don't as I step over and just smash it in front of everyone. And she was like, oh, well, we're not supposed to like, and I, I knew as I was doing it, like, oh, I shouldn't do, it. oh, it's already dead. <laughs> like, Holy it was shit. Like that's an like... aggressive stop in front of the whole class. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> God, that, that's like a scene from a Martin Scorsese flick for the spider. <laughs> it's just like the element of surprise right there. Remember what we talked about. Right. Yeah. Don't. Oh, damn. Yep. Oh, shit. And it was okay. just the deflation in her body that was like, oh, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. So I think I do have, I'm very, I'm the spider killer of my home. I, you know, if it's there, I go and get it. But the other two are very afraid of them, so. Dang, the spy there should be like a nickname for that. The spider killer spider of Seattle. Killer. The yeah. spider assassin of Seattle. I like this. Okay. Serial I'll take spider. It. Nice. Arachnid assassin. Okay. All Ooh, right. well, that's good. Mm. That's yeah. I feel like the arachnid assassin would just stomp right when somebody was like, You really shouldn't do that. This is yeah. I, this is how I deal You're with sneaky. it. You just you don't even think about it. Because <laughs> And Blake's having, you know, this is a lot of conversation and thought about it. I don't think about it very fast. I'm like, oh, there it is. Bam. Uh, <laughs> it, also, I feel like Daddy Long Legs, it's such a nice name, too. Like, Daddy. <laughs> it's not like Papa Long Legs. It doesn't it's sound threatening. Cute. It's not like Father Long Legs. It's like Daddy yeah. Long Legs. Yeah, Daddy you know? Long Legs isn't disappointed in you. Um, <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> Papa long legs, maybe he might ground you. <laughs> yeah. Father, yeah. yes. But yeah, but, father long legs is for sure upset with you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Oh my god! I, so I, <laughs> this just makes me think about the whole family of long legs. It's like there's daddy yeah. long legs, is there mama long legs? Yeah. And like Timmy long legs and <laughs> Tina long legs. Timmy, like, <laughs> long, Timmy long legs. <laughs> That just sounds like something you called one of your buddies in high school, and then years <laughs> later, years later, he was like, you know, it actually was really offensive that you called me that. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been very insecure about my long legs. <laughs> yeah, there's old Timmy long legs. Yeah, old oh, Timmy God. long legs. <laughs> That's true. He's like, yeah, I battled. I, I went to therapy for years for that. Right, I've been talking about this to my therapist for years. <laughs> oh god that's so sad did, did, monica did you ever have a nickname in school not to drudge up um, bad memories not that i know of that was like 
anything like that. I don't think I, <laughs> I was always an athlete, a tomboy, if you will. And right. I was very much bullied for being like an athletic girl when I was in elementary oh. and middle school. Some girls were really mean to me. But then I think by high school, they were like, she's not going to change. <laughs> so they were much nicer to me then. But I think that comes out a little bit in like my social abilities and stuff. I'm always like a little on guard that um, uh, women are going to be mean to me. It happens often, not to put this on everyone, but when if like, like a bachelorette party of like younger girls comes into a showroom. If I'm in the bathroom before the show and they don't know who I am, they're like as rude as they would be normally, you know, and they kind of like stare at you in the mirror and stuff. And then after the show, after I've been on stage, they love me. And I'm like, why can't you just be nice in the beginning? Um, like, why do I have to prove myself that I'm not threatening? That's the thing. I'm never going to like steal their boyfriends or whatever. Um, and I'm pretty nice, but they, it's that, and it's not their fault, probably, I'm sure we're conditioned to do this, but it's this, like, defensive thing, like, right away, and I'm, so I always have that in the back of my head, where I'm like, ah, he's, I'm still getting bullied. For me. No. <laughs> I don't know if I had a nickname, but that's funny that you said spider killer, though, because <laughs> I had, I had that same energy, you know, in college, I probably wore clothes like jeans and stuff to class like three times I was always in basketball shorts or sweats normally because I was coming from practice and I had to take this <laughs> this class that was um it's literature about time travel right time travel in literature and it was only like an eight-week course during the and summer you took it in it the was... past <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> I'm was... sorry I'm sorry I couldn't now you're... <laughs> future me took it in the past sorry, and um <laughs> It was, if my professor was really cool, he was, he was from like a Berkeley professor that was just teaching in Seattle for the summer and everyone right. else was like arts degrees and just, if I was the only science degree person in there and I was just, no, I didn't really want to be there. That wasn't always my favorite type of class. <laughs> and he was... <laughs> It was only eight of us in there, and he was trying to describe, like, villages, like, a long time ago. Instead of people getting paid, everyone had their one job, right? So right. <laughs> this was his examples. He goes, uh, so, Tom, if you're really good at cooking, then whoever goes and hunts brings you the meat so that you can cook, right? If you're really good at fishing, then that's your one job. You catch the fish and then you bring it back. And he looks at me and he goes, and Monica it was really good at killing bears. And I was like, what? Of all these people are already intimidated by me. <laughs> and then you're just like, she's a bear killer. So we need her around. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, if Monica's really good at just taking down a grizz. She's killing bears. Full-sized yeah. mama bear grizz. First of all, Jeez. not happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh god daddy long legs oh. is the most i can do um <laughs> but that i was be... thank you i was like they already are afraid of me for whatever reason <laughs> um, no i kill bears thanks so. oh, yeah what god. a what a great way to help him help you warm up to the other <laughs> yeah students. help me be fit in thank you i don't even remember his name um, <laughs> oh god yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Spider killer. Um, bear killer. One of them. Bear killer. Jeez. Yeah. Just a danger to the wilderness. Like, <laughs> fuck. The opposite of Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, to this person, I would say, if, because they have a phobia, they're afraid of it. It's hard to just be like, murder it, yeah. kill it. I'm honestly a little disappointed with their roommates. Yeah, me too. They're like, quit making a big deal about it. They're like, or I'd, you could just kill it, and then I wouldn't have to make a big deal about it. Yeah, it's not a bear. <laughs> it's not like a, a snake. <laughs> but if you it's need a, a bear killed. <laughs> call Monica for yeah, the bear okay. killing. <laughs> if you're in a tiz with a grizz, call Monica. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. I uh, enjoyed it. I think, I mean, I like that. I feel like they're trying to be nice and not kill and like just get it out of their room. I don't know how to lure a spider. I've only ever just murdered them very quickly. <laughs> so I don't know how you would get it out of there without, I don't know. 
cup? Do you do put it in a cup? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would say cup. That would be if you want to be like non-transparent about it, not metaphorically speaking, but literally, <laughs> do like a cup that is not not clear. Yeah, then, so then you can't. You don't see have it. to see it. Yeah. Nice. Yes, that's good. Yeah, well, then so I, I kind of like it, it said like, well, if I just scoot it out into the. <laughs> Common the area. general living area the common area then i won't have to worry about it i'm like that's not, it's gonna crawl back in and it's gonna go in your mouth or something don't do that don't let it if you get it in the cup put it all the way outside yes exactly because i mean it, it not only does it know where you live it knows where you sleep and it right. will come back it has already been in your bedroom and and to make you it's daddy so <laughs> that's what daddy long legs are known for daddy long legs <laughs> God, I wish I had a friend that I could call Daddy Long Legs. I feel like I need, if I ever had an entourage. But now you're going to know. When you meet that guy, you're going to be like, oh, it's him. You know, you're like, that's Daddy. <laughs> that's true. That's, oh, that's Daddy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, and then I'll give him some of my homemade kombucha and be like, can yeah. we be friends? Can you and be my be daddy? And the person that's like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you gave me this. <laughs> Mm, mango carrot yum who would have thought of that flavor combination delicious and then we would become friends you're right okay yeah. <laughs> well i feel like that is a perfect fruity note to swallow and end on so we're gonna end there but monica perfect. thank you so much for joining me giving advice talking a little bit about yourself and telling people about the wonderful special and meditation and videos that you have it yeah a super pleasure Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited for all the albums to be done. But yeah, October 30th, mostly finger guns, that's stand up. And then in November, an album called Chill, that will be meditations, guided meditations. God. But everything, yeah, my website is just monicanevy.com. So that'll have all the different information and links to get to all the other stuff. If you want to watch 80 for 80 or follow me on YouTube, whatever. What I don't remember what you do, but yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, you know, just so, so you're, you were polite about it. So I feel like people are going to flock, yeah. but, um, <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Monica. And we'll talk to everybody next week. Bye-bye.